In this episode of Video Fashion News, it's all about luxury and opulence on these high style runways. John Battista Valle takes his Parisian woman to Rome for fall 2021. In New York, Bibu Mohapatra looks to a feminist landmark for spring inspiration. Then, step into the video fashion archives to see how the designer has evolved. He just has this great eye for bold, beautiful, feminine prints, and he applies them to his clothes in a very ladylike way. Erdem shines a spotlight on his dramatic fall collection, while Andrew Jin weaves an opulent fashion fantasy. But first, Sergio Hudson heralds the return to glamour at his latest New York Fashion Week show. I think the Sergio Hudson woman is the type of woman that is innately styled by herself and has her own style and doesn't need anybody else to define who she is. It's all next on Video Fashion News. The look is red carpet, red carpet, high fashion. We're glamming up their skin. We're really going deep with the highlights and the contours. We're really contouring them out for, you know, to sculpt that face, to give them the sculpted look. Natural brow and um, a little bit of a, a nude lip with a pop of glitter on the lid. We're fashion fair. Fashion fair is like really amazing with those stick foundations. They're really emollient. And then their serums behind it just make it work. Really just give us that, that sheen that we're looking for. High glam, 90s inspired, smooth, straight, expensive hair. We're taking models of all varying lengths. I mean, we've got some that are just like chin length and on the collarbone, and we're just extending them by like 18 inches. Girls with long hair, we're thickening them up as well. So we're polishing all the hair first, then we're putting more hair in just to make it look like expensive long hair. Any model with short hair, it's just a slick back, glossy, really expensive look. Very chic. I'm using my favourite Unite products, obviously. We start predominantly with a heat protection spray. It's called Silky Smooth. And over the top of that, we're just using like normal hairsprays, Go365 will apply. And then for our slick look, we use our Session Max over the top of our um, liquid volume. Well, the inspiration started with a picture of Diane Carroll, and it just went on from there. <laughs> so, um, and then inauguration happened, and we just, it, it put a jolt in the collection. So we really filled the collection with a lot of just great separate pieces, stuff that people are hopefully gonna want to wear. I think the Sergio Hudson woman is the type of woman that is innately styled by herself and has her own style and doesn't need anybody else to define who she is. So I like to give her pieces that she can inject into her wardrobe however she sees fit. I don't, you know, I'm not a big makeover person. Like everybody has their own thing. So when you when I design, I be, I'm able to see things how other people see them, but I'll present them how I saw them. I love a fabric that looks like it doesn't stretch, but it does, so it's a lot of like stretch wools and, you know, stretch suiting. I injected a print into the collection. I don't do print often, but still with the monochromatic theme that I like to keep. Oh, I'm so pleased with Sergio's show because um, he seems to know his customer and they all were in that audience. And I think it's marvelous when someone really knows who they are. And as a designer, he knows who he is. And he has aspirations, and you can sort of see that. And I'm just very impressed with everything.
Yeah. Things change consistently. Look what we're doing. I mean, we're dealing with so many things that are so different than what it was before. But in a wonderful way, I like what it was before too, because we really were based in the garment business and it was all about the garment business industry, really apparel. Now it's all about fashion and that's a quick drive. So we have to make sure the people who really are in it really understand it's all about business in the end. Your business has to be solid. So that's what I work with the designers hub and why Sergio's part of our hub, because I just want the designers, no matter how much press and all this they get, that at the end of the day, they can leave for their business to a family that they have a solid business in the end. That's the most important thing. I don't know if I want to see anything change. I want to, I want to see what's changed, how it plays out. Because I'm not so stuck on the industry per se myself. I've been around, been done it. You know, I grew up in the garment business, so I love that. But let's just see how this all turns out. It's interesting. It's nice to lay back a little bit and watch it and just help those who really need true guidance. The crazy thing is, me and Veronica Webb just kind of met on Instagram. <laughs> I'm wearing a beautiful sunburst yellow, crystal beaded, sexy, let's go out because COVID's over and if it's not, we're going to get vaccinated and dance till we drop dress. <laughs> I had just talked the, the day before with um, casting. I was like, I would really like somebody like Veronica Webb in my show. And the next day she DM'd me. So it was like crazy. I was like, okay, this must be fate. So it just kind of happened and she has become a great friend and mentor even for sure. Sergio's work is joyful. It's sexy, it's powerful, it's old school in that he has an incredible love and knowledge of fabric. It's what women want, you know, and it walks that fabulous tightrope, you know, like that 80s, 90s, just beginning of women power dressing in the workforce, you know, but also being luxurious and sexy. Specifically the Austrian crystal gowns at the end were just something I wanted something that would just shine and sparkle and like after not having being able to wear evening wear for so long I feel like a woman would want to like really wear evening wear so we really went there. fabulous <laughs> and buy it because <laughs> it's going to fit you great. Giambattista Valli took his Parisian customer to his hometown of Rome where movement and dynamism were on his mind for fall 2021. Volley balanced French and Italian signatures in the collection, and imagined a customer that was progressive, eclectic, independent, and of course, chic. Delicate embroideries and luxurious fabrics elevated the pieces. Puffed sleeves were a boldly glamorous touch.
cream and blush tones were contrasted with black for a dramatic look. Pearl accented tiaras were the opulent cherry on top of this sophisticated and fierce collection from John Battista Valli. For spring 2022, Bibu Mohapatra drew inspiration from the infamous women's building in Los Angeles. Formed in 1973, the women's building was a nonprofit arts and education center that offered a safe space for feminist, lesbian, and bisexual female artists. The runway offered pared down and refined elegance for spring. Sophisticated silhouettes were elevated with artistic prints and delicate detailing. A muted color palette of whites and blush tones was punctuated with a vibrant mossy green. The collection was a celebration of women, their individuality and strength. Now, rewind the clock five years and step into the video fashion vault to see how Bibu Mohapatra has always been inspired by strong women. So the look at Bibu for spring 2016 really is based upon Anna Maria Schwarzenbach. And all the pictures that I saw on Bibu's inspiration board really, you know, lent to that masculinity and that strength of a woman. And I wanted to incorporate that in the look. So what we did was we created a really deep side part. Then we pull it over and we give that 1920s, 30s, 40s roll to it. Everything's contrived, controlled, very Bauhaus architecture, geometric. We know Bibu is an amazing craftsman, attention to detail, but he's known for being kind of like this architectural designer. So we wanted to build this kind of architectural look on the face. So it gives them finished skin, nude mouth, and this really strong architectural blue eye. And we're seeing a lot of blue at Fashion Week this season. So we're kind of fitting into that trend, but we're doing it our way. Well, we, we'll really say Bibu's way. My muse, Anna Marie Schwarzenbach. She was a journalist and a photographer in the 20s, and she was the Bauhaus woman. And I wanted to do a collection inspired by Bauhaus work. And I wanted to find a muse, and she was the perfect muse. And she only lived to be 34, but she uh, became a style icon. She was a journalist, and she traveled. She was a nomad. And so I related to her in many levels. So she became the muse, hence the collection. 
Bauhaus. Give it to Bauhaus, man. She hung out with Gropius and who started the Bauhaus school. So the whole world became that. I love his pattern and print work, and I think he just has this great eye for bold, beautiful, feminine prints, and he applies them to his clothes in a very ladylike way. I design my print, and the graphics come from old, unused rug designs from that era. The construction of his clothes, the fit is great. You know, a lot of times you see these clothes on the runway, but like they won't fit real women very well because they're fit for you know models that are super thin. And so Bipu really understands construction and how to fit a woman's body. So you know if you do have curves, it's very, very flattering. They're clothes for real women that are elegant, that are sophisticated, that are professional and doing big things in the world, but still don't want to sacrifice their femininity, which is what I love about his clothes. He's really been fun to watch as he grows and blossoms as a designer and how he gets more tools to evolve has been great to see. But for me, it's all about the modernity of print mixed with the classic kind of go-to feminine shapes that he does that he breathes new life into and clothes that fit well and are elegant and ladylike. For fall 2021, designer Erdem Moralioglu brought us to the ballet. Dancers in Erdem's printed gowns and soft tailoring crisscrossed a spotlit stage in the dramatic presentation. The initial spark for the collection came from Erdem's collaboration with the Royal Ballet in 2018. For this collection, Erdem worked with dancer Edward Watson as movement director. The presentation was intended to evoke the liminal space between onstage and offstage, or between mental and physical, private and public. The collection was evocative, powerful and feminine, a standout from London Fashion Week. Andrew Jin presented his fall collection in a dreamy video, set in an 18th century home, which showcased his opulent creations. The designer's signatures were on full display, multicultural references, chinoiserie, and opulent detailing. Jin's eclectic influences included an 18th century Queen Anne cabinet, the painter Henri Rousseau, and Rococo style. Sharp shoulders gave a strong presence to the feminine dresses. Exquisite embroideries Brocades and pearl trims were artfully glamorous. Now, step into the video fashion vault for Andrew Jin's dazzling fall 2016 collection, half a decade earlier. In Paris, Andrew Jin celebrated an imperial reign with rich details and haute couture techniques. 
I am thinking about Russia before the revolution. In fact, I found these two really beautiful photos of Tsar Nicholas II with his family and then another photo of his two daughters in the beautiful uniforms of their own regiment. It's like a beautiful embroidered military jackets with a long taffeta skirt. And I thought it was so interesting, this idea is quite romantic as well, of women like playing on masculine and feminine in the beginning of the 20th century. Started researching on all sort of different techniques and crafts revolving around the Edwardian period, like couching, cordings, lacings. So I did a whole research on that, integrate all those techniques into these collections and have lots and lots of beautiful, rich fabrics and, and voila, a rich winter again. Lots of furs, and we have done a lot of beautiful cover-up pieces, we call it the mantle, during the early 20th centuries. So they were like beautiful cashmere or camel hair, embroidered with black jet and black ribbons and cordings and fur. So it's more, it's more, and there's no stopping me. It's a moment for maximal fashion again. I do it in my own way. It's subtle, it's very luxurious, and yet it is actually quite modern that women would like to wear today. I do have a lot of daywear pieces, especially we've done a quite a lot of uh, knitwears with uh, beautiful braidings and also lots of lace insets and things like that. So they are sort of like day into night. And I think today it doesn't really matter whether it's day or night. A lot of women wear sequins in the day and then women are wearing like military pants for the evening with a beautiful evening top and I think that's wonderful. It's not just sparkles, it's also the idea of very intricate hand done because I'm actually a great supporter of slow fashion and I believe in producing things that cannot be copied within 48 hours. So I make sure that it's labor intensive, cannot be copied immediately. So that's my whole goal. So my day, even though it looks like a black dress from afar, but then the woman had to spend like a day and a half cutting holes in the jersey, braiding it, lacing it, stitching it up. So, you know, good luck for trying to copy me. <laughs> I mean, my favorite piece is actually the last piece you'll see. She's like Queen Victoria moaning for Prince Albert. It sounds depressing, but it was so mysterious and so glorious and so wonderful and so fabulous. That's a wrap on this episode of Video Fashion News. Tune in next time for another fashion experience.